This huge e-bike here is from a company called Crusher. It is their Ranger model, and it's got those 26 inch sized wheels, four inches wide. Nobly tires that do offer huge amounts of grip and traction for going both uphill and downhill. The Ranger did come really well packaged up, so there's plenty of padding around it, and the box is super heavy, it's 52 kilos. So minimal assembly, you've only got to put the front wheel on and then the handlebars. You'll also get this box inside, so included with the bike, we've got our pedals, they're from Walgo. We have an owner's manual in both English and French, some cheap mirrors here that you could put on the handlebars, I would never use those myself. Uh, a lot of tools, key for the battery, so there's two of them to lock that battery into place so no one can just go along and take it, some barcode thing. We've got our screws for the front wheel, our charger right here, and this, which is a twist accelerator. So you can install that, but do check first with your local region if you're actually legally allowed to use this. Some places you can't use these twist accelerators, and that's why they didn't install it out of the box here with this European version I've got. So this front shock here is not from a known brand. Unfortunately, it's not a Fox or Rock Shock. It's a kind of a downhill style here, and it does offer a decent amount of travel. It's about 45 millimeters, according to the grease marks left behind from some of the large drops that I've been riding around down here. And it does have an adjustable preload to it, and it can be locked out completely if you wanted to do that. The bike comes with an LED headlight. It is hardwired, and it's very powerful, about 250 lumens. It's enough to light the path up ahead of you so you can safely ride during the night. And we do have this rear reflector LED tail light. It runs off its own batteries, which are included. So it's not hardwired, not running off the bike's battery like the headlight. Rear shock, also a non-known brand of rear shock. It's not actually too bad. It is adjustable, you can lock it out. And for travel, I'm seeing around about 30 millimeters out of this rear shock. Now the Ranger here has a nine speed setup. Our Duralia is the Shimano Altus, which is pretty low end, but it's not their complete bottom level, at least when it comes to gears. For the chain, we have a KMC brand chain. It's their Z model and it is painted silver. And then the rider height, well, it does cater for 170 centimeters. So you can drop that seat right down up to then 200 centimeter rider height. And the max load capacity for the bike is 150 kilo riders. The bike looks like it does have a mid-mount motor in here, but it doesn't. It's a rear hub motor. So this maybe is for future models or other models they may be releasing. Now the pedals, they are from Welgo. They are alloy pedals. The rear hub motor is a Bifang motor, and I've seen many of these. They are actually very good motors. And it is a limited, my version, to 250 watts and 25 kilometers per hour. But there is another version which is 750 watts, super powerful, and I believe that one doesn't have a speed limit either. The Ranger's battery is huge. It's located here in the frame. It's locked into place. We get two keys. Now they do use Samsung cells. It's a 52 volt system, so it's the more powerful you get out of these e-bikes. It's either 36, 48, or 52, which we have here. Charge time is about five to seven hours, and removing that battery, you simply need to put the key in it. You just turn it, and there's a little latch here that you need to release, and that battery, because it's so heavy, normally just kind of drops right out, and it sits in the frame nicely. You can see, look at how big this thing is. It is massive because it's 20 amp hours. So for brakes, we've got hydraulic disc brakes from a company called Logan, they're 180 millimeter, and because we've got the four inch wide tires with the knobbly tread pattern, the braking performance is excellent with this model here. And I will be doing my emergency braking test later on and you'll see that the stopping distance with this bike here is really good. Brake levers from Logan, they do feel very good, so nice and firm. We've got our light switch here, which is just for the front headlight that is hardwired, the rear tail light that runs it on its own battery. Our buzzer, nice and loud too. That's built into that front headlight unit. We've got our up and down pedal assist levels. So they go from zero being off right up to five. We've got a mode button here to cycle through the trip computer. Our light switch here too as well. So you can control that or you control it through that switch there. There's two options. And then the power on button is just under here. The screen the Ranger uses is nice and large. I really do like it very clear. So you can see the pedal assist levels 
This right here is our speed, the odometer. So I've done 33.5 kilometers at the moment. I've got 41% battery left, and I've calculated that I'm looking at about 50 to 55. But bear in mind that I have the version that's limited to 250 watts. So if you've got the 750 watt version, well, you're probably looking at a lot less when it comes to real world range. Even though they do claim it can do 56 miles or 90 kilometers, I believe it's quite a bit less, especially with the weight of the bike. So cycling through the trip computer here, you can see we've got our max speed there, the average speed and odometer and trip. The Ranger does use lock grips, so that's good to see. And our shifter right here from Shimano, it's quite cheap. One of the cheaper parts of the bike, but it does the job and you can clearly see which gear you are in. Onto our ride test now. So this is a monster of a bike. I like the look of it, the style. It is super heavy. You notice that straight away. So the 34 kilos with the battery, it's 30 without it. And of course we've got the Bafang motor at the back. So I have the EU version as I've mentioned, which is limited to 250 watts and 25 kilometers per hour. Now the bike, the weight of it, you feel too in the steering and it's not like you can just pop the front of it up real easy. I mean, you can a little, but you notice that weight and that front shock, the style of shock too, carries a lot of weight. So it does use a speed sensor. When you start to pedal, I'm in pedal assist level five here. When you start to pedal, you notice that motor kick in straight away. It's got a lot of power and it's running off a 52 volt system, which is the more powerful. So you get either 36 volts, 48 volts, or the 52, which the Ranger here does run. So going up a bump like this for these tires and the suspension, I don't even need to lift the front wheel up. It just rolls over everything. It's very good in that regard. And the spongy fat tires, of course, and the suspension, even though it is no brand suspension, does seem to work really well. So a steady climb, like the one I've got right now, not a problem at all. Even limited to the 250 watts, this Bafang motor, which is a known brand. They're quite reliable, quite good motors actually too. You see them in a lot of e-bikes. It just goes up this without any problems at all. Now the gears with those Shimano gears, nine speeds, not a problem either. I can shift up and down, nice clean shifts, no problems at all with them. So when you get over about 25, 26 kilometers per hour, it will cut out. And that's when you're on your own pedal power and boy, do you feel the weight of this bike. So if you try to ride up a slight hill, a slight incline, it is a little more difficult. You do notice that, you feel it. Now the top speed of the bike because of the 26 inch wheels isn't too bad in the ninth gear. I can ride up to around about 30, 31, 32 kilometers per hour, maximum top cruising speed. Again, you're not touching that battery because you're going over 25 kilometers per hour. Now, of course, my climb testing spot. So this is about 20, it's in some parts, probably about 25 degree climb. And I expect even limited to the lower 250 watts here that it's not gonna be a problem. I am in pedal assist at level five. So that's the top setting. And this is not a problem at all for it. I am in the third gear at the moment. I could lower the gears down further and climbing at 16 kilometers per hour. I'm putting in minimal effort here. I would estimate that I'm doing about 20% of the work. The Bafang motor is doing the other 80%. It is that easy to climb up this. Braking test now. So it will be an emergency braking from about 30 kilometers per hour from this post here, one, two, three. Oh, really good brakes. So it made it to before even this part of the fence here. So it's excellent. We've got brakes that are from Logan, hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter, and they work really well. So I'm heading back up this. I'm gonna climb all the way to the top into the area of the mountains for some off-road tests. This is where the bike is really at home here gravelly trails such as this. Now I don't have the twist accelerator installed so you could even be using that and not even pedaling at all if you wanted to, but it really soaks this up. Thanks to the suspension, so full suspension and those soft spongy fat tires. And because of the bike's weight, it feels really planted going downhill. 
they're handling this really well. I've got a big chopper head. Not a problem at all for the bike. And then climbs, this is where the bike really excels. As long as you keep pedaling, it just rockets up this, handles all these large stones really well. It's just that, you've got to keep the momentum. Keep pedaling, and it just conquers everything. Now this is climbing up this better than my 29 inch Trek Rail 5. I've got the 2020 model, and this is just amazing how well these fat tires handle climbs with this really rocky terrain. Absolutely just eating this up. I can just keep going and going up this trail. And downhill is exactly the same. Because of that weight, handles it so well. And the tires, it's all about those big fat tires giving you tons of grip. They are soaking up so many of these little bumps here. And then that suspension also doing its work. Even those real rocky bits, not a problem at all. So for range, as I mentioned before, when we looked at the trip computer, what I've been able to do, I've got 41% battery left. I've done a very big climb to get up here and I only have the 250 watt version. My range is around about 50, 55 kilometers, which falls quite a bit short of the 90 kilometer range, but I guess they're just testing on the flat, maybe with a lighter rider than me. I'm 82 kilos, and the terrain is gonna be a huge factor, of course, depending where you're gonna ride a bike like this. So if you've got the 750 watt version and it's unlocked and the speed and everything, then expect uh, the range of this to be even less than that. I would say maybe 30, 40 uh, kilometers. So the bike's got a lot of good things going for it. The frame, the design of it, the look of it, the, the welds and overall quality is very good. Now even though we've got no brand components for shocks, okay, I don't really know what brand this is or the front one. It's not a Fox, it's not a Rock Shock. Uh, they're actually not bad at all and I've tested out a lot of these Chinese e-bikes now and I'd rate these ones as being some of the best that I've seen for no brand that is. We do get the Logan brakes, hydraulic brakes. They work really well. The Bafang motor is super torquey, super powerful. Samsung battery cells, 52 hour volt system and 20 amp hours. Uh, the bike is really nice to ride and I love the way that this just rockets up climbs. Those spongy fat wheel tires are just fantastic for these kind of conditions. Out here on a mountain with these rocky trails, it goes downhill, really well it climbs really well as i showed you it climbs even better than my uh, expensive trek rail 5. the downsides of the bike are pretty obvious that the weight of this thing so it's 34 kilos it's super heavy now it's reasonably well balanced the weight because we've got the motor at, at the rear hub here and then we've got the heavy battery pack here which is just behind the the front shock of course so it's not too bad the balance of it and popping up that front wheel, it's not too difficult, but it's not a bike that will that feels light and playful, that you could easily do a couple of tricks, um, pop the front up, jump up things, whatever. Not really a bike for that, not with this kind of weight, and not a bike you wanna be moving around. It is huge, just look at the size of it. The other is the price. It's uh, about 2,600 euros uh, here in Europe, so it is expensive. Now, of course, if you add another 2,000 or so euros, you could get a more known brand like a, a Trek rail e-bike with a Bosch motor, uh, with Fox shocks or Rock shock. There's that that comes into play there too. But if you're after a bike that handles climbs with ease, you want the fat tires, something that's really chunky, sturdy, solid bike that just feels well planted when you ride it, then I do recommend the Crusher Ranger here. So thank you so much for watching this review.